Hey, you over there. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Do you know what sound is? No, I don't know what a sound is. Oh, well, I'll tell you what sound is and I'll tell you too. Sound is a form of a longitudinal wave. And today we're gonna to discuss what a longitudinal wave is and how it propagates through a medium. So stay tuned. So what is a longitudinal wave? Now a longitudinal wave, like all forms of waves, is simply energy propagating through a medium. Now that is of course only true for mechanical waves, electromagnetic radiation, we have propagation of energy, but in this case there is no medium. But that's another story. However, in the terms of our waves, we have particular motion of the particles that make up the medium, in reference to the direction of the wave. Now in my previous video I discussed transverse waves and transverse waves is when the particles vibrate perpendicular to the direction of the velocity of the energy or the wave. In our longitudinal wave the particles vibrate in the same direction. So I've got a slinky here, it's a pretty rough and ready setup but I've suspended this on with um, fishing line so that we can remove the friction that often is associated with this demonstration in the classroom. And so therefore it's easier to see the longitudinal wave. So I'm gonna cause a vibration, which is how waves all start. And let's see if we see the wave. Now you see the wave moving from one side to the other. It is a little bit messed up in the fact that I'm getting some reflection on the other side. So there is going to be some waves coming the other way and it's interfering with the setup. If this was a really long slinky, like you know four or five meters, it may, may be easier to see the different areas that you see moving across. Now, what are those little areas called? Well, what you're seeing moving across is where the slinkies are compressed together as it moves across. Remember, the particles themselves don't move from one side to the other, they're just moving backwards and forwards. And you notice that the red spot here stays put. However, the fact is, the fact that the particles are pushed together or compressed, we call it a compression. And so that region that you moved across are the compressions. And if I have multiple compressions moving across, at a regular rate, the distance between those two compressions we call the wavelength. But what about the other areas? That is, the areas in between the compressions. Well, that's where the parts of the slinky are actually furthest apart, and we call those the rarefactions. Again, distance between rarefactions is also the wavelength, but we generally, traditionally, measure the wavelength from the areas of compressions, which is pretty easier to see. Let's see it again. Now, of course, because the particles are close together, we also say that the pressure is higher at those points in time. And so that is in essence why you hear. We have our compression wave or our longitudinal wave traveling through air and that compression, that high zone of pressure hits your eardrum and then of course your eardrum vibrates and therefore that energy is then transferred, transformed into electrical signals to your brain and you hear something. So here we have another little animation that represents a longitudinal wave. And in this case, it's supposed to represent the nature of sound waves. So all these little dots represent our air molecules. Now on the left, you'll see the line that is moving left and right. So this is our starting of our vibration and it's acting a bit like a speaker. And you see the whole series of compressions moving from left to right. And of course, the distance between each of those compressions is the wavelength. But particularly what you to take note of is the blue dots. What you see is that the blue dots is representative of all the dots here and that they're all undergoing periodic motion, moving backwards and forward, what we often refer to as simple harmonic motion. They are not moving from left to right. It's the wave that moves from left to right. Now, all waves have a speed as they travel through the medium. And the question that arises, what determines the speed of the wave as it moves through the medium? Now, I want to do one last demonstration, and that involves a speaker inside a vacuum chamber. And what I'm going to do is going to play some music, and that music is going to play via my iPhone here in terms of Bluetooth. And I'm going to then going to remove the air from the jar. 
So you're going to hear the music and then what's going to happen when I remove the air from the jar? Let's listen. Let's turn the music on. Hopefully you can hear that pretty clearly. But now let's remove the air. So I've sealed it off. And you can hardly hear anything at all. Now let's reintroduce the air. So as you can see, the sound returns. Now, why is that? Well, because sound, like all longitudinal waves, is a mechanical wave. That means it requires a medium for the sound to travel through. So by removing the air, I remove the ability for the energy to pass through the medium. There was no medium, and so therefore the sound wasn't coming out. There was a tiny little bit of sound simply because of the interface of the speaker with the jar, but for all intents and purposes, we had completely taken this sound away. And so therefore there was silence instead of sound. The reverse is true too. If I increase the density of my material, that actually allows easier propagation of sound. So in other words, sound travels roughly 340 meters per second in air at room temperature. But if I increase the density of the air, the sound actually travels faster. If we increase the density to such that we actually have liquid, then sound travels faster still. And so if I then have, let's say, sound traveling through a solid like solid steel, well, sound travels in that case around five kilometers per second. So it's significantly faster. So the point here is, is that a longitudinal wave can only move through a medium and therefore the medium will have an effect on the way the sound travels. And Removing the medium altogether means no sound whatsoever. And so therefore, for movies where there is space involved, where you hear uh, explosions of stars and death stars and, and spaceships and so forth, well, in actual fact, you won't hear anything because, again, no medium, no sound. In any case, I hope that's given you a better understanding of longitudinal waves and in particular, sound. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful and stay tuned for my next videos. Take care. Bye for now.